So let's make a context for grammar, actually three in this case, corresponding to two different languages, L1 and L2, where these two languages are context-free languages. So I have two context-free languages, and I want to form the union between them, as well as the concatenation between them, and then the star of either one. I'll pick L1 here. So if they're context-free languages, then we have two grammars for them. So G1 and G2 are context-free grammars for them. And what we want to do is we want to make a context-free grammar for these three languages. And it's actually fairly easy to do. So let's talk about the union one first, because it actually will generalize. So if we have the union of two context-free languages, then that means that either G1 can make the string that we're after, or G2 can make the string that we're after. What we can do is we can make a new start variable. So this is a new start variable. I'm going to call it S here, and I'm going to use S in all three cases. So then I'm going to add a rule here that says I'm going to go to the start variable of these two grammars. So let's call them S1 and S2 of these two grammars. Then I can either have S1 make the string that I'm after, or S2 can make the string that I'm after. There's one small technical problem, though, is we got to be sure that the context free grammars we're dealing with don't have overlapping variables, because if G1 has a variable called A, and G2 also has a variable called A, then any rule that G1 involves with A could, in principle, if we just combine the two grammars together, could switch over, and that can cause havoc. Whereas, if we rename all of the variables in the grammars, then we have no problem whatsoever. Okay, so now let's do L4B, and we can do something very similar. What we can do is, again, a new start variable. It's still going to be S here. Whereas now, I'm going to have not S1 or S2, I'm going to put S1, S2 together. Because concatenation of two languages says, pick a string out of here, string out of here, and then combine the two together. Whereas here, what we're doing is making some string with S1, and we can't quit early because S2 is a variable, and we need to make a string of terminals. So S2 is going to make some string, potentially, and then that corresponds to generating a string in the original language. So now let's make one for C, and that's L1 star. Well, we got to think, well, what is the base case and what's the inductive case? Because star involves infinitely many different languages in some sense. One thing that you should be aware of is that in the star of any language is the empty string. So if we have an S here, it doesn't matter whether L1 can make the empty string itself, L1 star always has the empty string in it. So then this grammar must definitely generate the empty string, even if L1 did or didn't, it doesn't matter. So here I'm going to force that it can make the empty string, even if it didn't before. But if we don't do that, well, the star of a language is defined to be any number of concatenations that you wish. And so we can use this idea where we can go down into the grammar for L1, make a string, and then decide maybe we want to go again if we want to. And so all we need to do is to go into the start variable of S1, followed by going recursively to the start variable here to allow us to go in again as many times as we need to. And whenever we're done, we can just make that one S go away. Because whenever we're making this right here, we're only having one S being generated, which is a later going to be replaced. So we're going to have at most one S occurring anywhere, which is exactly what we want. So therefore, we have made a context-free grammar for the union concatenation and star of two context-free languages.